Good morning, Nigerians. You're live on Family Love 99.9 and .9, was the inspiration station. And you've been tuned in to the programming on the morning belt known as the Hello Nigeria show with Sanami and Victor, of course. But now I arrived to take the baton from them and the relay race continues on this radio. Today, Conversation Radio takes center stage on From Brunner. And this morning on the radio, we're going to talk uh, some politics, uh, politics in a different kind of way, according to my guest in the studio this morning. Do stand by, everybody, for From Bernard this morning. And today we'll be joined by a gubernatorial candidate from one of the parties running for the election ahead of the February and March early elections coming. Stay with us on your radio family of 19 and of 9 your inspiration station. Okay, so we're going to start proper now. Okay, I'm good. Action. African Action Congress. African Action Congress. Yes, African Action Congress. AAC. AAC. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. One more time. I am Sydney and I'll be your host for From Burner this morning. Joining us on radio to talk about his uh, ambitions, aspirations, interests, uh, maybe challenges and impression of the entire political cycle in Nigeria. I have the gubernatorial candidates of the African Action Congress this morning live in the studios of Family Love FM. We are joined by Dr. Chidi Cadet Wanyang. Good morning, Doc. Nice to have you join us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very pleased to have you join us. Thank and, uh, you. My pleasure also. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you may have taken you uh, a bit of time to get here, but we are very happy that finally uh, we both are here to talk about politics. No problem. All right. I hear you don't describe yourself as a politician per se, like politician, no, poor politician, no. then what are you? What, what, what are you doing? We, um, I and my, my party, we are social activists. Actually, we are a product of the Take It Back movement, okay? Uh, we just uh, registered a party barely four months ago, the African Action Congress. But what we are all about is actually uh, social activism. So. It's more to me about leadership and not just politicking. So that's why I see myself not as the professional or conventional politician, but as uh, uh, an interested a citizen who is interested in leadership. And that has been my main trust and uh, the, the driving force for what I do. And that has gotten me. That's what has gotten me into so many leadership positions in the past. You know, I was the president of the uh, Nigerian Canadian Association uh, the, of the Nigerian Community in Canada. And I was also the president of the Enugu State Community in Canada before I became the president of the Nigerian Canadian Association. So it's always been leadership, uh, a lot of a, a big part of my life. Impressive, Thank impressive you. to know that leadership is not a strange terrain for no. you. But it's not every day that one runs for uh, the governorship position of his state. Uh, yeah, it's it's not like the other positions you've held in the past no. are you faced are you daunted by the challenge ahead of you oh yes oh yes and let me take let me give you a little background of course i grew up in enugu here i'm a product of the university of nigeria not just university of nigeria but university of nigeria enugu campus, campus yeah. i'm also a product of the then um isu tech i was the, the one of the, the, the just we're about a hundred or so of us that started the pre-science program, uh, we are the first people that went to Abakli to start that. So I'm like uh, born and bred in Enugu. I know every part of Enugu. And then, so I, I know the challenges that, that, that exist in Enugu. And then before I even left Enugu to Abuja and then eventually to, to Canada, I've always had this passion to, to give back to my community. I have a foundation that is called my Roots Foundation with which I, I send back uh, medical, I do medical outreach in Enugu. And then um, once I got into Canada, I, I wanted to be part of what was going there. I joined my community immediately. I hit the ground running. I joined my community and less than a year, I became the president of the Enugu State Association. 
and that's that's just to tell you that it's always been there you're talking about, about whether i'm prepared i've been primed and prepared for this and when we were when i was the president of the nigerian canadian association we used to always talk about nigeria we used to i I've led a lot of protest march in downtown Toronto. We've gone to the Nigerian embassy. We've done a lot of things. In fact, online they started calling us um, uh, uh, online war <laughs> warriors. Okay, and then they challenged us that why do we just stay overseas and talk, talk, talk? That if we really know we are serious, we should come down and be part of the the, uh, uh, the, the program, be part of the the, um, the challenges, the part of the solution. So that's why I took up this challenge and I said, okay, I've done my bit here in Canada. I'm going to go right down to the grassroots and be part of the change that we're looking for. That, that's how I came back. Very interesting. We have in the studio this morning, in case you just uh, tuned in, uh, we have the privilege of uh, having in the studio this morning the governorship candidates for African Action Congress, <laughs> AAC, a political party. He says it's like no other. Uh, he says their vision was uh, based on activism, but that they have to, or they had to reach the political party in order to participate, to, in, the election. To participate in the elections. And uh, I think that's uh, the right way to go. So in the studio, we have uh, Dr. Chidi Kadet Wanyang yes. live this morning on the radio. And uh, uh, in case you're listening and you're wondering, uh, he's a returnee, like we call you guys abroad, you know, <laughs> guys who stay. Under. But I come back every year, though. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's very important. You'll be yes. able to establish the fact that you're not strange to Enugu or whatever goes on as far as Enugu is concerned. That exactly. you haven't, you've never left. No, Enugu. I never left. You never left. No, I never left. You were always going to come back. And Enugu is in the blood. Okay, <laughs> you know, I like that. When, when, wherever you go, you always remember that you have to rep your city when the time definitely, comes definitely. and his city is the city of Kola. That's yes. why he is in the studio this morning to tell us more about himself and his political party. Let's talk about your political party, right on. the African Action Congress. Yes. Are you guys related to Nelson Mandela? Because every time I hear African Congress <laughs> in one sentence, it sounds like ANC, you know, so why African National Congress, African Action Congress? Yeah, you are very, very right. You're very right. What that's, it's, it, it did in you what we wanted it to do in people because in African Action Congress, in choosing that name, we recognize the role that um, Nigeria plays in Africa. We know that if Nigeria gets it, all of Africa gets it. So our vision is beyond the shores of Nigeria. Look at, it was Nigeria that liberated Africa. And everybody in Africa, everybody all over the world, black Americans, black everywhere, they are looking up to Nigeria. Look at it, Nigeria that is leading the fashion trend in Africa, the music, everything. So we realized that, hey, the burden that we have is not just for Nigeria, it's for Africa. So whatever we're doing in Nigeria, we are aware that the whole of black race is looking up to us. So we had to answer that name so that whatever we say, whatever move we make, whatever I'm doing in Enugu, I know that it has influence on Africans, Nigerians all over the world. So that's why we answer African Action Congress. Our vision is beyond Nigeria, but if we need to get it right in Nigeria and then it affects everybody in Africa and by extension all over the world. Mm. All right, that's uh, what the party is all about, your party mantra. Exactly. Yeah, to say, okay, so your party is based on making sure that Nigeria gets it right. And exactly. you believe if Nigeria does get it right, the whole of Africa will follow suit. Exactly. All right, that sounds uh, like a, a tough ask if you ask me, because if you look at the way Nigeria is at the moment, yeah. you know, you return to, you've been elsewhere, you've traveled the world, exactly. and when you come back, you see. Uh, some of the daily challenges that Nigerians are made to face. Yeah, uh, you don't think is it's a tough, tough, no, 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 tough, no. tough task ahead of you. No, no, no. I'm actually encouraged. The fact that I've traveled around the world and I literally traveled and practiced around the world in every continent. Coming back to Enugu State, I look around and I'm very, very uh, encouraged. I know that we're on the right track. You know why? Because. I see, I see people in our market. I see the, the the tailors in our market, market, what they are making, and I know these are these are better than the designs I've seen in in countries like France, in America, because all over there right now, African fashion is trending. You know what I'm saying? And you see musicians 
all over the world. You see black black Americans in Canada, somebody like uh, Drake is uh, teaming up with uh, African uh, talents, artists, yeah. artists to sing. They all want our beat. Our beat is now gone into the IT. We have our beats now on, our, on, on computer and all of that. So I know that it's not a tough, tough situation all we have to do is to get it right here they are waiting for us the, there's a huge market out there they are waiting for us they are speaking our pigeon they are eating our jollof rice they are they are, they are wearing our abada and our kara so they are waiting for us all we have to do is get it right so it's not a tough tough situation let's talk about your party a little more you yes. know for starters yeah uh they'll be like uh AAC, you know, action. Yeah, action. Uh, when you say AAC, we say take it back. When you say take it back, we say action. Wow. <laughs> you sound like an activist movement. That's what we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about African Action Congress. Yeah. A little more, you know, we we know the two big parties. Yeah. Yeah, the APC, the they're, PMB. They're, Actually, there's no two big parties, there's just one party. Okay, one party. Yeah. APC. PDP is just the two sides of the same coin. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Be before my guest uh, starts throwing shades all over the place. Uh, okay, well, we recognize on pen and paper yeah, yeah. that they are the two big players. Yeah, I um, agree. I agree in, with In you. the game. Yeah, you know, and people will be like, African Action Congress, yeah. are you a self existing party or are you a product of a merger or are you intending? to merge with some other parties to form a coalition. We need to know your platform. Okay. You know, to know whether you are even strong enough to be considered in the first place. Okay. Because Nigerians we admire all these other parties, but exactly. we seem to be stuck. Yeah, yeah, I uh, understand. I understand. With, with with APC, who some people have described as not my opinion, some people yeah. have described them as a choice between the devil and the people you see. Okay. And yeah. you don't want to take that. <laughs> now listen, uh, um our party we didn't set out to 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 form a party. We didn't set out to form a political party. We were just tired of being tired of what was going on in Nigeria. So we just uh, started with our, our convener and our presidential candidate, uh, uh, Shore, who you know is the uh, publisher of the Sahara Reporters. Reporters. You know the, the work is done in investigative journalism. So he knows it all. He was there uh, when the last government was there. He was part of the people that really, really uh, chastised them. And when this government came up and he saw that this government was not really doing what they said they were going to do, he came after them. And in coming after them, he was really tired of what was going on. So he started this movement and then he started reaching out to his friends. It was all about the movement. And so when we co when we continued as a take it back movement, he started doing town hall meetings. He's done town hall meetings in all the continents of the world. He's gone everywhere. He's, uh, in doing this town hall meeting, Why all the continents of the world? Why because in Nigeria. All the states and local governments in Nigeria. Exactly. He's done all that, uh, by the way. But the, we needed to start from the diaspora because take it or leave it, the diaspora became the only hope of Nigeria because the people in the country, we realized that people have become tired, they become complacent, they, 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 they become worn out, they've been beaten because it's been a lot of time, a lot of years of this thing happening. People just want to get by in Nigeria, they don't, they don't, they don't have time for any, any other thing because it's hard for them. So the people in the diaspora, whom you know by the way, form a large percentage of the economy of this country by the monies that they send back mm. home. So we started from them because they were in a position where they were free to talk. They were in a position where they could actually see what was going on in the country. It will amaze you that sometimes we, the people in diaspora, caught wind of news, breaking news in Nigeria before people woke up in Nigeria. Because On the contrary, there is a, a popular thought out there that yeah. diaspora Nigerians, yeah. apart from the fact that they don't vote, exactly, yeah, they it are feels... also believed to be detached from the realities on the ground. No, so, I am no. being educated oh, my by goodness. you per se. Let me tell you. Let me. I have a media. I have a media company. It's called Worship Media. You know what happens when news breaks in Nigeria, or when we have citizen report, and they send us a video. We are able to edit the video and upload it fast on the internet. But the speed of internet in Nigeria is so slow that by the time other bloggers are able to get the news up online, the people in the diaspora already have it and they send it down. But that wasn't your question. Okay. Like your question was centered on why 
we why yeah they, why emphasize why start from diaspora nigeria yeah, exactly when we could actually yeah the uh, best start from nigeria oh, so once we are going to yeah, turn yeah, up yeah, yeah, in yeah. february 2016 and early march to vote because we needed to we started the movement we needed to fund the movement we needed people to speak up so we and it worked we started from diaspora we got all the support that we wanted and then we moved it down to nigeria and then when we came to nigeria it caught up like like wildfire Fire. and then we've been able to travel uh more in the has been able to do his rallies in all the states of the federation except maybe one or two but he's done town hall meetings it's done everywhere and you talked about the strength of our our party yeah, structures and, uh, yes we have structures everywhere and you know our concentration our base is the youth and you know that the youth the age bracket from the statistics that uh, are youth between the ages of uh, 15 to 35 they, they, they cover about 60 percent of our Nigerian population. Nigerian population and they find I like released uh, their data and you will see the people who actually registered and are going to vote youth occupy about 65 percent of them so that is where we we reside and that's among students among school leavers among job seekers this is where our base is, and you, you can't you can't you can't be looking for them. They're all over the place. So we have the strength, we have the zeal, because who else has the zeal than the youth? So our party, we are ready for this election. We've, there, we've been there for four months, and it's amazing what we've been able to achieve in just four months. Let's talk more about your candidacy. Yeah, uh, it's good you've been able to introduce your party very well, the yeah. African Action, Action Congress, Congress. Yeah. and you've been able to locate uh, the foundation and the role played by its presidential uh, standard bearer. Yeah, you know Omoele Shawere yeah. of the Sahara Reporters. He doesn't need a lot of introduction. Exactly. Uh, exactly. He's he's been able to make a mark. Yeah. Yeah. Even though some people do disagree. Uh, with his uh, reporting but some people like us also fancy the fact that uh, he seems to go hard on almost everybody. Exactly. Uh, okay, so <laughs> let's move away from Shore and his uh, presidential uh, candidacy. Let's talk about your gubernatorial candidacy. Yeah. Let's, let's come back to Enu State, for example. Yeah. Enu State is in the hands of God. Have you yeah. heard that? So I, if it's in the hands of God, yeah. why try to change it? Why fix it if it's not broken? Because um, God was not in the in the in the ballot box when we voted for the governor there of Enugu go. State, so um, I'd like to. Uh, the whole of the world is already in the hand of God, so let's not invent the wheel. And uh, my life is in the hand of God even before the election. But we need to have leadership, and it is leadership that we voted into power. So the affairs and the responsibilities of Enugu should be. Uh, answered by the the, the chief, uh, the boss of, of the uh, the man in charge. So yes, um, I don't want to get uh, religious because I know people. Once you say, if I say that any state is, is not in the hand of God, people will be like, oh my God, crucify him! He's not. <laughs> Why would he say? You like, know how religious we can get. <laughs> exactly. Around so I'm very careful with that. The whole world is already in the hands of God, including any state and including I myself. But when it comes to the leadership of Enugu State, the person who is in charge is the chief executive of the state, who is in the person of the governor of the state. Mm. Let's put a name to it, right, Honorable Ifani Lawrence Ugwain. The person, the, man you want the, person to... the person who is uh, uh, in position of, <laughs> who is the boss, who is also my boss, is the right Honorable His Excellency um, Ifani Ugwain. He is the the executive governor of Enugu State. Does it occur to you that you are aspiring to replace him? Oh yes. Or have you have you thought about that? Let me tell you something, and, and I don't know why people don't understand it. In Igbo, we say that Onye is a lawyer. Yeah. The fact that I am contesting to to replace uh, His Excellency Ifani Ugwanyi does not take away from the fact the fact that I need to respect him as the sitting governor of Enugu State. He is still my governor until I take over from him. <laughs> and that's that's very interesting yeah that's very interesting to say the least yeah. all right we have in the studio this morning if you just uh, joined us the governorship candidates of the african action congress aac yeah. in the studio this morning a doctor of philosophy we haven't yeah explored your person and your personal interest but okay. uh, as we move on you know in the course of a conversation some of the listeners uh, would know you better you know um, 
But now let's talk about governance issues. Is there anything? I know uh, we are not trying to assess the current government on what yeah. they haven't done well, but is there anything you'll bring to the table? Is there anything you're going to change if elected? The yeah. local governor. Is there any areas you want to work on? You think can use some improvement? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I always tell people that you see, uh, Enugu State, uh, the present governor, he has he's done uh, some good things. Okay, I can't take that away from him. The present governor has done some good things, but I know that I will do better. You know, um, Enugu State deserves the best. So yes, I I congratulate him for whatever achievement that he has done. But I am bringing to the table um, a total rehaul of the system. Uh, Enugu State, I know where Enugu State used to be. We've always been number one, right, from our East Central State days. But right now, it looks to me like we are not just uh, going forward, but we and not that we are stagnant, but I think we are beginning to actually go behind. So I am going to uh, go. What I intend to do is with my uh, uh, vision, uh, uh, my agenda, which I call the Mega Vision. I have a Mega Vision for Enugu State, and if you take the first letters of, of that Mega in my vision, uh, we say let's make Enugu great again. And under that mega vision, I intend to go back to take go back to where they left us, and then bring us forward, and then begin to get us ready for the future. Under and I've broken it down in those four letters of that mega. And under M, we're going to multiply job and uh, agriculture in Enugu State. It is unacceptable to me that a state like Enugu State, with fertile land, with uh, good weather, people are hungry on the street. It's unacceptable to me that when you go to uh, Aquata uh, in our better market, you have lorries, trailers coming in from northern Nigeria where there's desert, bringing in tomatoes, onions for us. Why would that? even cabbage and yams? Why? <laughs> when we can produce this thing? So that is the number one thing that I'm going to stop. How am I going to stop this? I'm going to have a massive investment in mechanized agriculture. In 2018, we are still using hoe to farm where there are tractors who use GPS. There are tractors that are not even mined by any human being. You just set them on a GPS and they continue to work from morning to night. And we're still using hoe to farm. So we're going to have farms in the 17 local government areas. What is this going to do? It's going to produce massive jobs for people. And not just producing jobs for people, we'll be able to feed the whole of Enugu State. But not just that, we have enough to export to the states in Nigeria. But not just that, we will export food outside the country. I've seen it happen. I led a delegation of uh, Canadians, uh, a member of parliament, and we visited states here. Actually, I wanted to visit Enugu State, but I won't go into that. They, they didn't let me. We went to Anambra State, and that led to Anambra State citing, uh, 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 doing some memorandum of understanding with them. And now Anambra State exports food outside the country. That is under under uh, under the, the M, the letter M. So it's going to. We'll expand that later, but that will just have a big job explosion for everything because there'll be, remember, there'll be storage, there'll be haulage, there'll be post-production, people will uh, process the foods, there'll be so many things that will come out of that massive investment in industrialized large-scale farming. Under E, we are going to enhance the economy of Enugu State. Let me give you a pointer. Do you know that people travel from northern Nigeria and they go to do business in Onisha? You know they travel and they go to do business in Port Harcourt and in and in Oweri and in Abad. Yet we are in the center of this whole movement. Why don't we build a market at that ninth mile where all of them? They just, all they do is they sleep and in the morning they, they they pass us and they keep going and they spoil our girls in ninth mile. So we're going to build a mega market in Ninth Mile so that we will stop this money that goes to Onisha, goes to Aba, goes to Port Harcourt. Because if we establish that mega market there, people will do their business there. And let me tell you what else we're going to do. You see the, the cargo wing of the uh, Akamibian airport. airport, yes. We're going to make MNA uh, a tax-free zone so that when these guys, if they know that's a tax-free zone, they're going to go to Dubai and put their goods sell it right there in MN and that will bring about explosion of warehouses and then you know and we will make sure that the roads that 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 go from Enugu to Potako to Onisha are serviced very well. So they will just come, take the goods from the people that are 
that have brought it in at MNA and they, then they go and the people will just go back into their planes and go back. They don't have to go very far. What that will do is that there will be so many hotels around that area. There will be warehouses, there will be businesses. Ori MNA will now become an international market. That is under E. Now, under uh, G, we're going to establish a great healthcare scheme for Enugu State. It is easy. Every citizen of Enugu State should be able to walk into a hospital and get every kind of treatment they, they want to and walk out free of charge. Why? Because the doctors and the nurses and everything will be taken care of by the government. And somebody says, how are you going to do that? That's not done. And I tell them where I come from and elsewhere they have health insurance schemes. And how is this funded? There's something called a general pot. That pot is tax. When people throw into that pot, the government will use the money that they collected from that pot to provide all these services. Actually, that's what the government is supposed to is, do. Isn't there a way you're going to lose us? Because from your M and your E, uh, you sounded very laudable, I'm telling you. You know, okay. you have these uh, ideas that uh, some people will just be sitting back and say, that's what I'm talking about. Yes. But then when you come to paying tax, you know how we are no, no, around I, here. We don't I, like I, paying I can, taxes. I can break it down. I can we don't break like it. paying taxes. Okay, so let, let, let me show your government is going to raise taxes. I'm not going to raise taxes. Let me tell you what's going to okay. happen. The people will voluntarily pay the tax. Let me tell you how it's going to happen. Remember that it's in phases. We're not just going to come in and start collecting taxes. First of all, once we came in, we noticed that the people are hungry, so we are going to embark on mass feeding and providing jobs for people. Now, when the people have, have, have had enough to eat and they have money in their pockets, you then brought then, their confidence about exactly, the governance. Exactly. Huh? The reason why people don't like to pay taxes is that they don't even have enough in the first place. So once you, begin, once you have money in your pocket, you're going to say, our roots are bad. You're going to now begin to see a lot of things that can be done. In fact, a lot of us pay more taxes than we should be paying if things were done well. You know why? Because we contribute money for projects in our development union. We contribute money. Things that government should have taken exactly. care of. Exactly. So by you pay in your local government uh, uh, development union, you pay in your village union, you pay in your uh, ward union, you pay in your old school association union, you pay in your to church. Exactly. So you are already paying taxes in 21 other places. You pay in the market, you pay everywhere. But when you have confidence in the government, first of all, and you know that you're just going to pay one, we might not call it tax. We will just say, instead of you throwing money all over the place, let us bring this money together. And once people see what is being used for, they will work with you. Now, let me go finally to the A in our mega vision. Under A, I'm going to bring about advanced world-class infrastructure into Enugu State. How do I know this? I know this because I am an architect. I have a master's degree in architecture. So, and I have a construction company. And like I told you, I've practiced all over the place in Nigeria, in the US, in China, and in UK. So I know what infrastructure is all about. And I have seen what infrastructure has been done in Enugu. And I know that praises have been uh, uh, <laughs> heaped for those infrastructure. So like I said, People can only do to the level that they know I am not attacking anybody, but you know, there's also superior knowledge and uh, and that's what we're bringing. State in. of the art. Exactly. So we're going to take what they have done, which we appreciate, we thank them for it, but we're saying that in 2018, there are better ways of doing things and infrastructure is not just road, infrastructure is mass transportation. There was uh, this um, uh, monorail project that uh, I don't know what happened to it. Uh, actually, the person who brought that monorail uh, project, uh, Igwemezie, is a friend of mine. He's based in Toronto, Canada. I actually worked a little bit on that project. So we're going to make sure that we bring it back. Now, imagine that monorail running from Gariki all the way to Obete. People will just, it, it, it will just ease traffic. And it doesn't take much of the road. It just takes the size of the pillar in the middle of the road. It's not even as wide as the median that you have in the middle of the road. So these are the kind of things that we're going to have. We're going to have buses. We're going to have even Kekenapep. We're going to bring Uber style of transportation to Enugu, where even Kekenapep, you will have an app through which you can pay. It sounds like it's not doable, but in Lagos, they're already doing it. So these are... That is my manifesto. This is just a summary of what we are bringing to Enugu State, the African Action Congress. Of course, in the AAC, we have a bigger uh, 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 agenda, a bigger mission 
a bigger um, agenda which we call uh, Spicer Heat. It's on our website, AAC uh party.org you can go there and you will see uh, the That's bigger version uh, it's aac party.com aac party.org if you go there you will see our party manifesto and if you go under candidates you can see a lot more about me and uh, my profile my bio uh, what i believe in what's my driving force uh, everything about me wow all right we've had the honor in the studio of um hosting the governorship candidates of the African Action Congress AAC yeah. is running for the number one position in Enugu State uh, without disrespect to the current administration he's of the opinion that a lot of things could be done faster quicker smarter and we can have better infrastructure you also listen to him in what he plans to do in the area of agriculture to produce and provide more jobs to the Enugu State people. He also yeah. wants to turn here around into an economic hub. Exactly. Uh, that will can drive. I, can I add a quick thing? All right, quick. Okay, because people, when you talk like this, and that's why I don't like to say manifestos, because it's like a cliche, it's like something that all politicians have. Mm. If you're asking me, how, because my main thrust is the youth, I, the youth don't have jobs, there's so much yeah. unemployment. unemployment. But when your phone breaks down, where do you go? You go to these guys who fix the phones. You don't go to one big company. Honestly. So IT is a big thing right now. And the youth are super, super crazy. They are super smart. So we're going to go around to all these guys at a at that uh, a telephone place. Because they can work on iPhones. They can work on whatever new technology that you have. They know all about it. So why don't we take those youths? Why don't we empower them? Why don't we make them be the ones that are driving the IT technology in Enugu? Let me tell you something. Even people who are in IT in, in, our, in, in uh, Enugu State uh, University of Technology and IMT and all other state-owned institutions, we're going to make sure that there's a synergy between them and these guys who repair the phones. Because you could go through the university for four years and you're not able to repair a phone then it is better that you have these guys you know better you know have some kind of signage that is i want to tell you the way my my brain works i i work with what is on the ground and we're going to empower these people if you give them the right facility and it's not just going to come with a government we're going to attract investors look at the, the new phone companies that they have in nigeria my brother there is so much there's so much there's so much um to be harnessed here there is so much in this state it is just the right person to be able to harness this energy this um this it, it just gets so emotional when you think about the amount of uh intellect that you have amongst our uh, young people when your car breaks down you go to coal camp you have young people they they, they, they do something right from scratch they do the the the, the break you know that brake pad they cut a piece of iron they grind it to the same size they put the holes they work magic it's they work magic and nobody is is harnessing them co camp has been co camp for how many years come on yeah it should be bigger than, we should have one big in the, we were better than even the, I, was, I was there come in, on. in december you know to have something uh fixed <laughs> for me and yeah. Then I saw the ingenuity, but then yeah. again, I saw the decrepit environment in which they, they were doing all those yes, beautiful things. Yes, and I thought they could deserve better. Of course. You know, of course. All right. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking to the AAC candidates for the Enugu governorship election that we hold in early March. And he sounds like a man who knows his audience and uh, he knows his whereabouts in Enugu as well. We're going to take a very quick break. When we return, we round off on the from Bonner this morning. Do stay with us, everybody. You're on to Family Love 99.9 Enugu's Inspiration Station. Welcome back to the special edition of From Bonner this morning on Family Love FM. And that was Victor with the news at the top of the hour 10. And in the next 10 minutes, we will be uh, within the next 10 minutes, we'll be receiving calls from you as we talk to our guest this morning, the governorship candidate of Africa Action Congress, AAC, in the Enugu State governorship election coming soon. His name is Dr. Chidi Kadet Wanyangu. Good to have you still in the studio, Doc, and we 
Thank we, you so much. We appreciate you for your patience. I appreciate you too. All right, so let's talk about the the security situation. You just learned from the news about the certain development that happened this morning, not very far from where we are. Yeah. And you talked extensively on some of the things you want to do under your mega vision. Vision, yeah, and how you're going to. But if you're going to do all of this and the right security atmosphere is not there, yeah, um, we might not succeed. Fine, fine. Mm, so, what would you do in the area of security? Because you are a strong advocate for youths and some of these various security incidents are carried out by the same people that same demographic the yeah, youth yeah, yeah. you talk about yeah very eloquently yeah um unfortunately uh, the youths have to to bear that accusation but you see under the expanded version of our manifesto the manifesto of the african action congress which we capture under the acronym FISA youth S in Spicer Heat stands for security. That's actually the number one uh, number one in the agenda of the African Action Congress. And if I localize this, I always say that um, the governor is the chief security officer of the state. So I'm going to be going into uh, the leadership of Enugu State, recognizing that it is my primary responsibility to uh, secure the life and property of the people in Enugu State. Now. 2018 we are in a period where we must use technology we must use technology to to be able to administer uh, 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 security and it is it, it's going to take um, the governor of the state is going to take his ability to relate with all the security apparatus in the state to be able to provide adequate security and let me even go to when you talk about the, the age bracket that is involved in this um, in, in the crimes that you talk about, the reason why the primary reason that is not the it's not the only reason, but the primary reason why people go why young people go into crime is because they are unemployed. It's because they are jobless. So by the time we provide jobs for all of these young people, it's going to drastically reduce the incidence of crime within our state. We all agree that that is the primary thing that that uh, will reduce uh, insecurity amongst our uh, our youth. And then you need to work with the, let me tell you something, anytime that the police, if you want to know whether the police is really active, go and kill the police. I'm not, I don't want to use the word kill, but touch one of them and you'll be caught. When you provide the equipment that the police need i'm not talking about just the police everybody who is involved in the security of the state when we provide them with the right security uh, the right equipment the right training and then look at their 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 salaries you know aac has promised a hundred thousand naira basic minimum minimum living wage not salary, minimum living wage to all Nigeria. Nigeria today in the news, you just read that uh, they are rejecting 27,000. Federal government promised 30,000. Now they brought it back to 27,000. You see, you can't for states. For states. Mm. You really can't trust. As endorsed yesterday yeah. by the yeah. National Council of State. Do you know what 27,000 is? 27,000 is below $100. People work and they get $150 in a day. And the government is still battling with paying to less than so that we're talking about like eighty dollars. Isn't that insulting to the Nigerian masses and including the policemen and that you expect them? We, we worry when when we see them collecting bribes on the road, but look at what they have to take home. So when you that's minimum wage. That is even uh, just minimum. Well, wage. We're not talking about uh, 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 allowances and every other thing that comes. All right, we are going to move very quick to the phone lines now to take yeah. as few calls as possible. Okay. Uh, the number to call is 0809-8057-999. 0809-8057-999. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Your name and location. All right, good morning. Elvis from Garaki.
Thank you, Elvis from Garki. Hello? Elvis. We have to let you go now. Okay, we have to let you go. He has he has had his time, uh, even though he used uh, the first couple of minutes, you know, to uh, as, express some of the frustration yeah. that many young Nigerians also entertain. Yeah. The number is 0809-805-799. You might quickly react to his yeah, contribution let me, let me, while we wait for yeah. the next caller. Thank you so much, Elvis. When you talk about Godfathers, uh, categorically, the African Action Congress does not believe in Godfathers. We do not have any sponsors. We do not have any Godmother, uh, Godfather, uh, a money bag. We raise our money from ordinary citizens, from you. We have a GoFundMe account. We have a, a, a local account. People just contribute money to us, and that's what we do use. And you, you wonder, why don't we? We don't need plenty of money because we don't share money. These other people, they need plenty of money because they have to share for 5000 We don't share money. So the, the campaign that we will run with 100000 they need $100 million. So that's why the little, little money that we collect from people is enough for us. Now, when you talk about people do, who do, endorse... Do, do exactly, people turn up at your rallies? Oh, your yes. Campaign, even uh, when you're not sharing money? Of course. You, you need to go and watch our Enugu State rally. When our presidential candidate came, we, were, we had a massive followership. We went to uh, the markets we went on on our route. It's on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, you will you you will see all of that. Just Google Worship Media or Google AAC campaign in Enugu State, and you, you see Worship Media. Worship Worship as in praising Pray, God. Oh, okay. Worship Worship Media. Worship okay. Media. <laughs> if you if you go to YouTube and you type Worship Media, you see, and then you go to Enugu State, you see all our campaigns in Enugu. Now let me tell you that a lot of the names that you already called. When I was president of the Enugu State Association in Canada, I was able to relate with people like uh, Ken and Naman. He is uh, well known to me. He was going to come to Canada, but later he couldn't come. Jim Mobudo is very well known to me. I was with him and his wife during Christmas. I have that access to him. Uh, is he your godfather? No, it's not my godfather. <laughs> we don't have any godfather. <laughs> your father, the God? God is my... Yeah, I have, the only godfather I have is God the Father. <laughs> God the Father. God the Father. So, I'm, But I'm just trying to tell him that I have a relationship with all of these people, and they don't necessarily have to be my godfather. I There are there are, there are are elders, there are stakeholders in Enugu State, and we respect them, we consult them. There's no way you can do politics without consulting all these people. But that's what they are. We respect them, we consult them, the elders, the chiefs, Political stalwart, uh, Governor Sullivan, uh, His Excellency, the, the past Governor of Enugu State. 
when I organized the convention in, 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 in Canada, I talked to him personally. He gave me three commissioners that visited uh, Toronto and attended it. So I have a personal relationship with him. So all of these people, you have you can relate with them, but you have a mission. My my mission is clear, my path is clear, and I don't need and I need people to support me, but I don't need when you have godfathers. You cannot really deliver when you become the governor because you have to dance to the tunes of your godfathers. They actually sit down with you and they sign contracts with you. And when they sign contracts with you, it it, it, comp it makes you compromise when you become a leader. But when you win on your own terms, like AAC is going to do, when we get up there, we will work with our godfathers who are the electorates, who are ordinary citizens. So actually, I have godfathers, not one. And my godfathers are the ordinary citizens of Enugu State about uh, millions of us there. Exactly, and, and we, are, we, are, we are stronger than the, the few. All the right, um, thank you so much. We must thank, thank you. you for coming, thank you know, you for uh, once of time, yeah. you know, for the obvious constraint I'm gonna, I'm gonna come again, don't yeah. worry. We would have continued the conversation, but yeah. we will be expecting you to stage a return I will. very soon I will. on this radio. Thank yeah. you so much uh, for listening as well the phone line is still buzzing but we won't take more calls yeah because we have all the problems not even one let, let's give one first okay. chance i'd uh, like to hear from people let me be nice on wednesday hello <laughs> hello good morning your name and location make it quick all right good morning shadows here from gra go ahead Thank you. He was very elaborate with the manifesto. He's going to tell you where to go and you will find the manifesto. Yeah, go to aacparty.com, aacparty.com or aacparty.org click on uh, our manifesto and you see the manifesto of our party you can also follow the candidates there click on enable state and you would see our manifesto which is a mega vision where we say make enable great again is under uh the candidature of dr chili Khaled Mayan. no walls no mexican border walls. nothing nothing no walls right. no. <laughs> thanks a lot <laughs> thank you so much Oh, uh, Chair does here. Go ahead. Tsunami is here breathing down my neck. She's next. <laughs> go find out. Go go find out. Chair does here. Okay. Uh, please, Chair does here. Is still listening. You just yeah have to yeah. Chair does here. Tell him where to go. Yeah, job for the youth is our main trust. Our, our base is actually the youth so those are the people that we have in our minds and like i said when i was delivering my manifesto we are going to come with job uh job um <laughs> we're going to come with um pro job provision we're going to come with providing jobs for youth that is our main trust and we will do this through mechanized industrial mass agriculture that's what we're coming we're coming to do mass agriculture and that will provide jobs for youth we are also going to face it uh, it and we're going to mop up all the youth who are into it zuckerberg came to lagos to nigeria looking for people to work with him because he recognizes the intellect we have amongst our youth in every right. state we are going to do that also time is up okay and um, thank you for coming thank you so much dr chidi cadet thank you very much the gubernatorial candidate of action african action congress yeah He's been in the studio this morning with us. I want to thank everybody who listened to him and to thank you for always tuning in to this radio. It's Family Love 99.9 Hour. Thank you, Sydney.